Hello, my name is Aaron Fisher, and I am the Youth Livestock and Equine Specialist in the Department of Animal Science at the University of Tennessee. And my name is Dr. Liz Eckelkamp, and I am the Dairy Specialist in the Department of Animal Science at the University of Tennessee. We are presenting a video study series focused on dairy cattle related topics for Skillathon. This particular episode will focus on the ruminant digestive system. We will talk about the main differences between ruminants and non-ruminants, along with examples of each, as well as describe the structure and function of the ruminant digestive system and what makes it unique. Farm animals are generally classified as ruminants or non-ruminants. These classifications refer to the structure and function of their digestive system as well as the type of feed that is the basis for their diet. Non-ruminant animals possess a monogastric stomach and are sometimes called simple stomached. Their structure and function is very similar to that of humans. They, pr they primarily eat a grain-based diet. Farm animal examples include swine and poultry. While horses are also non-ruminants, they would not be called simple stomached. They are actually hind gut fermenters, which means that the cecum functions as the site of fermentation, much like the ruminant in cattle. Horses primarily have a forage-based diet like ruminants. You will often hear that ruminants have four stomachs. That is not true. They have one stomach with four compartments, the rumen, reticulum, omasum, and abomasum. One quick way to remember the order of the four parts is with the saying, run right over Alice, or R-R-O-A for the rumen, reticulum, omasum, and abomasum. Each compartment has a distinct function as it relates to the digestion of ingested feed. Ruminants are generally fed a forage-based diet. Farm animal examples include dairy cattle, beef cattle, sheep, and goats. The first compartment is probably the most popular compartment, the rumen. It is commonly referred to as a large fermentation vat. It serves as the host for microorganisms, primarily bacteria and protozoa, which are responsible for the fermentation that breaks down cell wall content of ingested forages. The rumen wall is lined with papillae, which serve to increase the surface area of the tissue and allow for increased capacity for nutrient absorption. The second compartment is the reticulum. It is commonly called the honeycomb because of the honeycomb appearance of the reticulum wall. The reticulum sits in front of the rumen and is the place where non-food items end up after being digested. This could include nails, wire, and other hardware items. These items can puncture the reticulum wall and cause hardware disease, which could lead to death. Magnets are commonly administered to cattle as a prevention for hardware disease. Next is the omasum, which is commonly called many plies because it looks like pages in a book. The major function of the omasum is water absorption. The fourth and final compartment is the abomasum. The abomasum is the compartment that functions much like the gastric true stomach of the non-ruminant. Digestive enzymes break down ingested feed here. Most forages are made up of cellulose and hemicellulose. Cattle, like other animals, are not able to digest these complex carbohydrates on their own. The ruminal fermentation is made possible by the rumen microorganisms. They give cattle and other ruminants the ability to graze land or ingest byproduct feeds that are not well suited for anything else and turn the forages into high quality milk and meat. A former college professor of mine used to call them biological bush hogs. The microorganisms and the animal live in a symbiotic relationship. This means that it is beneficial for both. The animal provides a warm place to live 
with a constant source of food, room and board, so to speak. The microorganisms break down the ingested forages into a usable form that can be used by the animal that otherwise they would not be able to use. Here is a microscopic view of rumen microorganisms. The large brown oblong shapes are one kind of microorganism that is eating and breaking down forages for the animal. The primary end products of this ruminal fermentation are volatile fatty acids, or VFAs. They are the main source of energy for the animal. The three main VFAs are acetic acid, or acetate, propionic acid, or propionate, and butyric acid, or butyrate. The microorganisms also produce other nutrients for use by the animal. They can turn non-protein nitrogen into microbial protein. Urea is a common example of non-protein nitrogen. There are also some B vitamins that are produced by the fermentation. There are also byproduct gases, such as carbon dioxide and methane that are a result of this ruminal fermentation. These gases can build up and cause bloat in the animal. If they are not released, they can lead to death of the animal. Many people talk about cows chewing their cud. This is actually the rumination process. Cows will graze for a period of time and then will ruminate, which basically consists of regurgitating, rechewing, and re-swallowing the forages that they have consumed. This works to reduce the particle size and aids in further digestion. So, chewing cud is a very important part of the digestion process for cows. Watch this video to see an impala chewing its cud. The long neck makes it ideal to watch the rumination process. At the beginning, you will see the impala regurgitate its food as it moves up its neck. It will chew for several seconds and then will re-swallow the forage, where you will see the cud bolus move back down its neck as it swallows. That wraps up our discussion of the ruminant digestive system. Please understand that we only hit the high points of the ruminant digestive system and the fermentation that takes place within the rumen of the cow. This process is much more complex than what we talked about today, and there are many other structures and functions that contribute to the anatomy and physiology of the ruminant digestive system. We wish you the best of luck as you progress through your dairy cattle project. Please let us know if we can ever be of assistance. Thank you and have a great day.